Finally, Betty, how often does South Africa experience earthquakes and how prepared are the people to deal with such disasters? Um, quite often you have earth tremors. Uh, you have, uh, I, I know the, the, according to the records that they have, the most destructive they've had was in 1969, uh, which measured about 6.2 or 6.3. Since then, you've had 5.5, 4. I, I still recall in 2013, the tremor that happened, I, I can't remember where the epicenter was, but it came up to southern uh, Johannesburg, where I stayed, and this lasted for about 15, 10, 15 seconds. Um, that measured about 4.4. About so it, because it's a seriously mined, mined out area or a seriously mined out country, you have so many mines in the country, and, and as the scientists say, mining can actually trigger some of these things, uh, the, trigger um, already existing natural fault lines. So, so it triggers, it, it, it can trigger earthquakes. So these happen quite often. About preparing, I, I, I can't really say, but we know that the companies involved here talk about all the equipment that they have and safety contingency plans, but um, the incidents are still recorded here and there, like, like you have in other parts of the world where mining happens. South Africa Bureau Chief, Batsadivia, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you. In East Africa, Mozambique's main opposition leader, Afonso Lakama, has died of a heart attack at the age of 65. Mr. Lakama led the former rebel national resistance Renamo Party during a 15-year rebellion against the Mozambican government, which ended in 1992. President Felipe Nyusi, who was ruling front for the liberation of Mozambique Frelimo movement, fought a long and bitter civil war against Renamo, says Mr. Lakama's death marks a bad time for the country. The president has urged people to do everything they can to keep the peace process on track following his death. President UC asked that Mr. Lakama had been working hard to restore peace between his movement Renamo and Mozambique's government. At least four people have been killed in Kenya after Al-Shabaab militants attacked a quarry in the northern border town of Mandera. The regional police board, Mohamed Saleh, says an operation has been launched to pursue the attackers that shot and hacked the victims, who are said to be non-Muslims. Local authorities say that 10 assailants took part in the attack, opening fire indiscriminately at the workers in the quarry. Al-Shabaab militants have attacked the Mandera County several times, a situation that is forcing residents, mostly non-Muslims, to flee the area. The United Nations has voiced concern over a surge in violence in three states in South Sudan following renewed fighting in parts of the country. In Unity State, innocent civilians caught up in the violence have taken shelter at temporary camps with casualties including children who are nursing gunshot wounds sustained during the attacks. In Lear Town in South Sudan's unity state held by the government, leaders blame rebels and young cattle raiders for the violence that is affecting civilians, mostly children. In Dabluwal, another region in South Sudan, an opposition-controlled territory, local leaders say the government is targeting people in villages across the region. People outside are being killed. Sometimes they hang you. Someone tried to hang me on a tree, but luckily I fell down and ran to the United Nations base. The soldiers will come and look for the IO soldiers, not IG and come and, and kill the children, kill the, the, the old woman, kill the old man, and then and, and destroy everything. Like now, they burn all the houses. They destroy everything, even the borehole. They are now broken. When they are finished, and then they go back, and then they will uh, be broken because people will not come and, and take them and drink water here. David Shearer, special representative of the UN Secretary General in South Sudan, says there were increased clashes in Unity, Jongle, and Central Equatorial states. He points out that the five other towns near Lea and Benti in the Unity region are the worst affected. At one point I thought at the end of last year we were moving in the right direction. Today after seeing what I've seen here, houses burned, children shot, um, the discussion of more conflict and more war, cattle raiding, 
uh, it's pretty uh, pretty disappointing. Um, I know this is only one place, but all across South Sudan there's, there's conflicts like this uh, happening, uh, if not one place and another. The war in South Sudan began in 2013 between soldiers of President Salva Kiir and ethnic Dinka and his former Vice President Riek Mashar. Tens of thousands of people have died, and a third of South Sudan's 12 million population have fled their homes. Both rebels and government forces stand accused of targeting civilians and humanitarian workers, and sometimes blocking access to relief and hijacking food and other aid. 165 Nigerian migrants have returned to the country from Libya. They arrived at the Mutala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, Cargo area at about 9.45 p.m. yesterday with the assistance of the International Organization for Migration. The National Emergency Management Agency's Zonal Coordinator, Yakub Suleiman, received the returnees on behalf of the federal government from the IM Head of Mission in Algeria, Ms. Anira Kazalik. Ms. Kazalik pointed out that the IOM, with assistance from the European Union, has repatriated 7,746 Nigerians back to the country. She asked the federal government to enhance efforts in the provision of employable opportunities to the returning youth. Many young people, women, boys and kids are leaving Nigeria looking for the better and greener pasture, as we would say elsewhere in the U Europe unfortunately Europe or somewhere else. Unfortunately, many of them do not reach their, their goals. That's why International Organization for Migration, with generous support from the EU, and in coordination with national government, representatives of some agencies here with us tonight, we are uh, helping those people willing voluntary return from Libya. With 7,746 returnees already returned, excluding tonight's flight of 165, where we are receiving them at the airport together with the national partners, and providing uh, all necessary assistance required upon arrival. Also, not only that IOM in coordination with the national government partners, that we are receiving them at the airport, we are also supporting them for, with reintegration assistance to provide them the means how to restart their life in Nigeria. Still to come on the program, our Africa Tech segment focuses on the importance of the Internet of Things. Please stay with us for details.